we're going live i'll just wait 20 seconds or so so i can see some people have checked in we're going live live and direct steve's saturday spice show We're about to go live. We're about to go live. So we're about to go live. We're about to go live. Just give it one moment. So we've got some great authentic Punjabi recipes coming up tonight and these are only a fraction of the ingredients. Let's have a look. Good evening Morgan. So what I'd like to show straight away is the star of the show here. Sarsan Kisag. So what it is, Sarsan is mustard greens so we've got a couple of bunches of mustard greens everything's been thoroughly cleaned and we have some sag so mature spinach and because i just could not resist the fresh green vibrance of some of the other also traditional ingredients i've bought some meti fenugreek leaf fresh and some coriander some dania so they're going to be boiled up and I really want the satisfaction of chopping those live, hence the big board. And to go with that lovely mix, we're going to be doing a, a taka of onions. So we've got a couple of Indian onions here. If you don't have Indian onions, not a problem. Onions are onions generally, aren't they? We've got some nice two inch square of ginger cut up into little bits that are going to fry up nicely. And a whole bulb of garlic so super healthy i mean just with these spices alone super healthy but we've got these amazing greens packed full of vitamins i just can't wait to eat this and that is going to be going with maki kiroti or corn roti which they go together like uh torval and dean phil and grant mitchell etc they just accompany each other so well so we've got quite a lot to work through today the tarka i was just mentioning we've got some cumin seed we've got some dried red chilies and they're going to be tarkered up you know seasoned oil obviously with onions and added to the stewed greens so it's all going to combine and we've got some great um flavors going on here we've got like a tablespoon just under of turmeric the same with garam masala and i freshly ground some coriander so it's nice and coarse salt to taste all the ingredients are going up in the description of the video and we've got some bullet chilies and to thicken it up in the traditional way we have some gram flour some basin some chickpea flour six people watching two thumbs up four people haven't some people may have left give it a big thumbs up it would be much appreciated and into the corn roti there's some ajwain very um prominent in punjabi cooking and um, i just don't want to uh get anybody to say oh how's he cooking authentic punjabi cuisine yes i went there last year it was fantastic lovely people amazing to visit the golden temple even on the front cover of my book that's a photo of me in the golden temple food is amazing and the food in the Golden Temple is amazing too. So we've got a lot to get through. So let's reboil the kettle. And I'm going to start by chopping these leaves. So now a little bit uh, laborious, but I really didn't want to chop these amazing looking leaves off camera because they're just so fresh, so great. And if you can't find mustard greens, because they are quite difficult to find, just use spinach and coriander it's amazing there are very similar dishes right the way throughout north india which are staples you know you go to a doctor in some of those regions 
and they'll tell you rather than prescribing you medicine they'll just say oh you know eat some sasa sasa na kasai you know, it's so good for your health and in the Punjab this is a traditional winter dish a must try when visiting the Punjab so that's it some of the stalkier bits we're not going to use and again the mustard greens let's make sure that kettle is reboiling oh it would help if it was plugged in because we're just going to make this green stew and we are going to turn it into a curry with all the ingredients that i mentioned earlier so these have been thoroughly washed obviously you don't know what uh, pesticides are being used these days get a little bit of a stalk in as well so i'm just the tougher pieces i'm going to throw away because we've got so much here so in with the meti now bunch them up nice and finely chopped so it's quite going to be quite a slow start to the video i was really disappointed when the last video last week from the live stream finished i was ready to rock and roll even when the video finished so this is nice slow cooking to anybody that's interested bunch of tuck looking so healthy very low in carbs very only trace trace carbs element in the greens and then you know it's really going to combine well with the corn chapatis or roti a little bit more of that let's get some of those stalks in and we're nearly done it looks an alarming amount of vegetables anybody cooking along where i announced the ingredients earlier in the week this is just a little bit more but you can follow the recipe with exactly the same quantity as i as i announced previously all this will really simmer down you all know that you know a bathtub full of spinach fits in a can when you buy the can of spinach it's literally a bathtub in size before it's cooked oh we're getting there slowly look at the coriander this is my interpretation i'm familiar with a lot of these really healthy green dishes you can use any greens you want and with the coriander especially the stalks as well as we all know i will have a look at the comments in a moment let's just get into the swing of things and get some pans on here so we're nearly coming to the end of the chopping process while I'm chopping might as well just uh, have a chat so next Saturday I'm not going to be doing the show because I'm going to become a father this week and it could be Wednesday or Thursday my birthday is on Thursday so wouldn't that be great if I had a son or daughter born on the same day as me so big changes And I'm going to be 45 years of age on Thursday. Amazing. I still feel so young, so full of energy. You know when you're young and you look at the rest of your future and think you're going to mature into a really sensible young man? Well, that never really happened with me to some extent. I'm still as lively as I am when I was a teenager. So, woohoo! That's a lot of greens, but trust me, it's really going to boil down. I'm just going to turn the pan on. Turn the pan on. What I'm going to do now, I can't do everything all at once and keep it in shot. Let's turn the light on to start with. A litre and a half of water. This is for the roti, it's all in the preparation. 
So what we're going to do first is put the spices into the water. I wouldn't put powdered spices into a tartar or when you're making seasoned oil, maybe turmeric. The chilies. And that's it for now. We're going to put a little bit of ghee in as well. They use ghee sparingly in the Punjab. It's literally the bread basket of India. So there's plenty of breads, there's plenty of dairy products. Where wheat grows, you've always got cattle. Where you've got cattle, you've always got plenty of butter. Or in the case of uh, India, paneer. So nice abundant recipes and very simple as well. Nothing, nothing, um, nothing mind blowing. So you just want to let that come to the boil. So what are we going to do next? Take this big pan away. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. So let's have a look at the, a little bit at uh, the comments. So thank you very much, Demit, for checking in. Not feeling this one, to be fair. Congratulations in advance, Steve. Cheers. No problem, Michael. I understand. I understand totally. You're not going to get this in a restaurant in the UK. This is real, real authentic stuff with a little bit of depth and knowledge and um, a little bit of tradition. That's a lot of grass. Yeah. So I am on a diet, so this coincides nicely with the diet. So am I going to cook some meat dishes on this Saturday show? I guess eventually. But, um, you know, with the birth of uh, a son or a daughter this week, who knows when the show is going to be back up. People say, oh, you've really got to prepare for a child coming. It's going to take a lot more of your time and you'll have to adjust your priorities. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So as that's boiling away, even though the green leaves are going to come well over the top of the water, it's going to steam away nicely. And you'll see how all that will sweat down. Now what's amazing, this, this video is going to take some time, like I said. There's a few elements to the cooking and it's all from scratch. None of your base gravies, etc. Only your ginger and garlic paste, it's all cooked from scratch. But when you see the thumbnail, it will be remarkably streamlined. And um, yeah, it's going to be quite a journey. So let's have a look here, just wash my hands. So here's my spoon. We just need to steam that away until it's soft. It shouldn't take too long. Some of the stalks are going to take a little bit longer to soak up the water than the leaves. But there's things we can do in the meantime. I just want to get this off to a good start. Yeah, that's, that's an issue I have, you know, as a lover of Indian food for over 20 years multiple trips to india and you know north south east west of india when you get inspired and then you want to make a video of what you've learned and when it's in english anyway it's not so popular but then again it's good to have a little bit of versatility on the channel you know i've done i've done chicken tikka masala that's uh, what people are after. There's other channels. It's boring. After a while, the so what are we going to do now? Let's just take this board away. So you stick to one genre. In the Indian food and its derivatives are not a genre. There are so many subdivisions and categories. You know, authentic Indian. And, you know, just with India, you've got Punjab, you've got North India, South India. The list is endless. And you've got British Indian food, you've got Suriname Indian food, Trinidad Indian food, Kenyan Indian food, South African Indian food. It's just remarkable how Indian food travelled 
the world and changed everywhere you go. So we're going straight back to the source today. And when I say the source, you know, corn, as we're going to be making these rotis, corn is from Mexico and it was taken to India in the 16th century and it's become a staple all over Asia. So just heating the pan, so we're going to start on the tarka. And we're going to need some hot water. Anytime you're making cornmeal rotis, you're going to need some hot water just to absorb into the quite rustic granules of the flour. So ghee. This is what happens for anybody that's watching from a warm country. This is what happens to ghee in the UK in the spring. Let's turn that down a lot as well. Just let that melt. Let's just give the, the greens a stir. It's interesting when you look, um, I'm approaching 2 million views, 10,000 subscribers, and you reflect on what you've been doing for the last four years on the channel in my spare time, something I love to do, and you think, well, some people have come along very quickly and become much more important on YouTube, more subscribers, more views, etc. And you think to yourself, should you follow your heart or should you sell out? Because my food goes a lot deeper than going down to my local restaurant and asking the waiter what type of chilies or how many chilies he's put in a dish. So yeah, real recognises real. But like I said earlier, it's good to be diverse. So, that gram flour, let's have a shot of this. Let's have a shot of that. That's going in to thicken up the sarsen, the sag, the mati, the dania. It all needs stirring so it's nice and lump free. So this looks pretty, I don't know, I wouldn't call it unappealing if you're into nutrition, but you think, wow, what's that? But it'll all come together. Once we've done this uh, onion, ginger, garlic and the cumin and the red peppers, it'll all start to make sense. We just need to stir. Even sifting it, you would have needed to really stir that anyway. So let's get a bowl. We can add the cumin. And red chilies to that starting to get hot that can be slowly melted off so what are we going to do next let's work on the bread which is essentially a tortilla uh, this is 350 grams so you're going to be using about a cup and a half um, and now for hot water Ajwain and salt to taste. A little bit of Ajwain is really, really tasty, and you get that a lot in Punjabi food. So add the water slowly, unless you've got plenty of corn flour, because if you overdo it with the water, you're going to have to thicken it up some other how with another flour, which which is fine. So it absorbs a lot of water, so it helps that the water is essentially polenta. So the challenge is to get these into a bread shape, which is going to be interesting in a moment. So it's too hot to handle at the moment with the hot water. We're going to put a little bit of ghee into that as well. It'll just help with the rolling out later and give it a nice smooth texture that will melt in. And I just want it to let it rest for the water to 
to absorb into the corn so it can be cooked. That's good. So that's in the bowl, I'm just going to let that rest. Put a little bit more ghee there as well. So what's happening over here? So you can tell by the reaction of the spoon when your greens are softened. So we're about halfway now, halfway. So you can see the red chilies puffing up. So they're getting nice and hot. Could use chilli powder if you don't have uh, any whole red chilies. Then we're going to be using some hing. Hing powder. Asio fatida. It's a pungent tree sap native to India. I've added just a third of a teaspoon there. It gives a really nice taste. If you ever go to Gujarat or go to a Gujarati restaurant, it would be 100% all vegetarian and they refrain from onion. And garlic because it invigorates the libido and having a pure mind is really important to orthodox Indian, um, Hindus like James so now we use hing as a substitute but you can obviously use it as well as onion and ginger and all right so next turn the oil up to a higher heat and we're just going to fry the ginger, garlic and onion. Have a quick look at this, sorry about the shakiness there. So that's getting there, I can smell the greens. Excuse me, I'm just going to clear down the kitchen, get it streamlined. There's nothing worse than working in an untidy environment. Make sure nothing sticks to the bottom. You don't want to add too much water to your, to your greens. But do make sure nothing sticks to the bottom. So, has anybody ever seen this on the menu? This is a staple in the Punjab. Punjab is one of the richest states in India. And if you go to other Indian cities and then you go and visit Amritsar, you'll quickly see how organised, how well built, how, how well built the buildings are in comparison to other Indian cities. So all good food comes or has its roots with the peasant so you can imagine somebody in the field in the winter picking some greens picking some mustard greens picking some you know a couple of onions and going back to the house and cooking this it's a very nutritious staple sweat those onions down and um, our little tortilla ball is Just resting there nicely. The resting period, what it does, it helps the water absorb equal, evenly. Unless you're making puri, you want to get it straight into the oil. That's going to be on a high heat now.
Ah, the greens. 80% cooked. Let's just divide our dough. I don't want to call it polenta. It really takes away from the essence of uh, what we're doing here, but it is polenta. Cornmeal, a little bit of seed. Another polenta recipe coming up shortly. So the bigger, bigger your uh, portions of dough, the less you've got to cook. I've got two tabas or um, griddle pans there, flat pans. That's uh, two, three. A bit more there. So, so we're going to get four. Let's just roll them over the smooth balls. Um, so if you'd like to put a big thumbs up, your time is as valuable as mine and you're watching. So. I wouldn't be watching anything I didn't enjoy, so put a thumbs up on the video if you like. It's a pity you can't see the thumbnail first, because it's very intriguing, this recipe. So let's have a look at the comments. Hi Andy, how's it doing in London? Thank you very much Nick, much appreciated. Oh yeah, Demet, the handle, I'm not even joking. I have a screwdriver down in the kitchen, but it's one of those ones that, uh, the, the type of uh, screwdriver you use for bikes, so it folds up like a Swiss Army knife. I'm looking for the long screwdriver to get in there, but yeah. The handle's loose, well spotted. It felt a bit bland. Okay, so Jack Turco said um, he tried this recipe in a restaurant and he said it felt a bit bland. Yes. I know um, restaurants depend on good food for their livelihood, but are they cooking it with love? That's the question. Nothing better than visiting a place, getting inspiration, and then finally getting around to cooking some dishes from there. So those onions need to be cooked properly. If you did it really quickly, they, they just wouldn't be so flavourful. So let's give that a stir, so you can see it's almost... Uh, the sauce has become really pasty. I'm going to turn that down to a minimum now. So yeah, what it lacks in what a lot of people in the UK would consider a decent curry for a good night out and going to a restaurant, what it lacks in that type of aspect, it more than makes up for it in half. So I've lost nine kilo in just over eight weeks. So really interesting to cook this recipe because I know it's going to do me a lot of good. Let's just take stock. So 29, 50 seconds in. Thanks for everybody who gave a thumbs up. I've got, for anybody that's joined late, we have the seasoned oil here, obviously the lashings of onions, ginger, garlic, nicely coarsely chopped. We've got some red dried chilies. We've got some cumin that we're using vegetable ghee. And we have four different types of super healthy greens, mustard green, uh, fenugreek, spinach and coriander and that is going to be mixed into there and we're going to stick blend it. Some, sometimes this dish can take people hours to cook but I like to speed it up and mimic the fact that it's taken hours by blending it a little bit. But I want to blend it once the onions are in because I don't want the onions protruding too much. It should be quite a smooth dish and for anybody that's missed 
we, we're going to be making these corn tortillas and they're looking all right they're looking okay so this this is the perfect accompaniment traditional Punjabi food I know you don't get this in Punjabi restaurants I mean it's very cheap to cook and you know it's it's a staple so it's not one of those like impressive recipes but nevertheless it's a great one let's hope I do the recipe justice and I can't wait to get to the finished meal I do stir your onions I'm going to put a little bit of salt into the onion as well could have done that earlier salt to taste and what it does it draws out moisture and uh, helps things cook evenly namely onions Good stir, and that's looking really good. I have this at the Golden Temple, not with the roti, they just serve normal chapatis. So the Golden Temple. It's a really interesting place to go. So the thumbnail of the video is me in the Punjab on the Wagga border which is about 20 minute, 25 minute journey from Amritsar, which is the capital of the Punjab in northeastern, northwestern India. So every night they do this amazing show. I have a video on my channel. Um, I think it's called Wagga Border, Stephen Heap. So it's W-A-Q-A. -A. And what, what it is, um, the Indians and Pakistanis, because it's on the Pakistani border, have a showdown every night with their military personnel doing a parade and see if they who, who can make it the more lavish the more you know there's people marching with a foot going past their head it's amazing flexibility and it's absolutely amazing on the Pak Pakistani side um, of the border there was actually a one-legged soldier with an AK-47 dancing and twirling on one leg it's amazing so check out my video with that, it's really, really good. So we're getting to the start of the end of this tarka. It's a bit more substantial than a tarka. Tarka is usually an oil with um, old seeds and other things in. This has got onions, ginger and garlic. So we get in there. I'm not going to rush, I'm not going to rush, even if I don't know what to say in between. Uh, stages of cooking I'm not going to rush it for the benefit of making the video and it's good I'm going to turn the greens up a little bit so they've been simmering about half an hour now maybe so let's have a look at the comments onions are really fried now you know that hot dog van satisfaction you get I can smell that so that's good so this is a good question should the mountain go to Mohammed or should Mohammed go to the mountain and what I mean by that should I pour this into the greens or should I pour the greens into the uh, taka I think we'll go for the latter kitchen gets very messy especially with coriander it sticks to everything coriander leaf so there we have it scrape all the good stuff off and this just needs to infuse or marry together now change angles so 
I think it's time to turn our tabbers on. Means only one thing, nearly time to get the rolling pin out. Just really give it a good stir. I'm going to have the stick blender in there in a moment just to blend it slightly. And there's a way to do it so you don't have to blend up all your red chilies, they can be taken out. Let's turn it down a bit now. So I've seen people using or making these uh, corn tortillas in their hand because they use a very wet um, a very wet dough. So it's a little bit like play-doh, but a little bit more brittle. So I'm going to, I don't know if the rolling pin is going to do it justice. You want to pat it down, but you don't want it to stick to the table. <laughs> I want them nice and round. I think I'm going to do all four of them as well. Might need a spatula to scoop those up. I've got a nice thin spatula somewhere. So you want them about, I don't know, three, four millimeters in thickness. And just shape them like so. That smells really good. So there's no show next week because we're having a baby born. The tavas are going to be nice and hot. I haven't forgotten about those. So the art now, well this was relatively straightforward so far. The art now is trying to get them off the table without breaking or deforming. Even in Mexico where and Latin America where people eat these for every meal. I mean it's a, a cheap staple, very economical. Even they use um, you know greaseproof paper and stuff. So I've got one, two spatulas here, so I'm happy with the shape, but not bad. Let's do the first one we did. Just work away. It's a little bit like trying to take a label off a jar. You know, work the edges first, and then there we go. There we go. Not bad at all. Good, good. That could have been a disaster. Oh, yes. And there it is on the tapper. I need extras. Excuse elbows. Good. So, I think I'll just follow suit with that technique for the other two. I don't think I need to even do that live on the camera. So that will be for after the show. So we're out of the dark, you know, the deep zone. So let's have a look at this. I'll turn the heat off. You can eat it like that. Depends what type of texture you need. What you like. 
it's nice and stodgy. You notice because it didn't use too much water in the beginning. And stick blend. Give it a better view. Mm, that's releasing even more. So let's turn these rotis over. They don't usually start moving until they start to cook, which is interesting. I remember the first time I tried to make a tandoor or a, a naan bread with a tandoor oven, <laughs> it slipped straight onto the uh, hot coals. And I went to fish it out. He said, no, don't do that. You wait till it's cooked a little bit and then it's easier to scoop out. So. All right, not bad, not bad. Not bad. So this is all going to comprise a little mini tally that I made earlier. Let's just have time out, have a look at the messages. Mmm, hot dog van fried onions. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the builders. Oh my god. Now I realise why my missus came over to me and pulled the back of my tracksuit up. She's looking at me sideways, not even with a sense of humour, you know. Looking at me like, oh my god, you can't take him anywhere. Ah, oh, I, I do apologise. So maybe I've lost my monetization for this then, because it should be for a, uh, audiences over 18. Oh my god. Anyway. All right, so I'm happy with the sarsen. Where's my spoon? Where's my spoon? I know what's missing. I use ghee as a garnish. So a lot of people say, oh, ghee is so unhealthy. Well, if you're sat behind a computer all day or doing some administrative duties in an office or something, yeah, these, these recipes are unhealthy quite often with the amount of ghee and that type of thing. But when you're a hard-working person, you know, on a farm or something, you know, farming corn, farming greens, you know, you'll burn this off, the calories, um, so easily. So, oh, those tortillas do take quite a little bit of time to roast. So I'm just going to make sure they're on, because we know the tablets were absolutely piping hot when we put the corn roti on or as the Pajaris call it, maki ki roti, corn roti. So what we should do now is dish up. All right, give me a moment. You know that if you ever make these, you can fry them and make tortilla chips. A little bit of uh, paprika, it's a winner. Righty, here we go. Okay, so tally ready. This is from CJ Home Stores, Hansworth, this tally. And the components cost about £50, but it fills the lid straight from the Punjab. So nice and authentic eating irons. Made a little bit of a salad with um, some red and green pepper, some cucumber and some tom tomato earlier with the mandolin with a little bit of chopped coriander. And we've got some curd here. 
curd. So what we need to do with that curd, I didn't do it in advance because it would have sunk, but we're going to add a little bit of chat masala, I think. So we'll have a quick look at the rotis. Okay, that's getting cooked now. Fantastic. So let's just ladle. And this is what the dish is about. This is the finale here. The grand finale, hopefully. So, Definitely need a little bit of red chilli. Where can I find the red chilli? Just for the top. There we go. Lovely. It always helps to have some paper tissues to clean up the edges of the bowl and you've slopped it around. Adds a little bit of finesse. So there we have it. We'll have a good close-up on that. Need a little bit of ghee on the top as well. Want that to start melting a little bit. <coughs> We've got our two corn tortillas. And it's almost as if we're back in the Punjab. Let's just clear away some. So how's it looking? So a good close up. So packed with health, vitality, make you good looking. Green vegetables, good for your skin, good for your eyes. And we've got the salad and we've got our two corn tortilla, which isn't always, I wasn't a hundred percent confident it would work out and we're just going to put a little bit of taste of india chat masala on top of the yogurt which is essentially a, a raita so i think that's about it from me oh god that's the smoke alarm on because the uh, roti pans have been so i think that's enough i've got to turn those off so thank you very much for watching I will return when everything settles down. Congratulations to myself and my lovely missus for the birth of our baby this week. See you later.